In addition to the 30-60-90 triangle, another very important type of right triangle is the so-called 45-45-90 triangle. So as the name suggests, it'll be a right triangle, so it does have a 90-degree measurement. The other two are going to be both 45 degrees. So this is a special case because this is the situation for which the right triangle is likewise an isosceles triangle. And so an example of an isosceles right triangle can be found right here. So we see that the angle measures are 45, 45 degrees. Of course, it's a right angle as well. Uh, if the legs are side length one and one, then the hypotenuse will be the square root of two. And therefore, by the usual ratio, if you're looking at sine here, sine of 45 degrees, the sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 45 degrees would be one over the square root of two. Now, if you're used to rationalizing the denominator, you can times top and bottom by the square root of two over square root of two, and then you end up with this figure right here, the square root of two over two. Notice the square root of two times itself gives you back a two. So sine of 45 degrees is the square root of two over two. Likewise, if you do cosine, you'll take adjacent over hypotenuse, and you'll again get one over the square root of two, which is equivalent to the square root of two divided by two right there. And so that takes care of sine and cosine of 45 degrees. But how did we know these were the side lengths that work out for a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle? Well, the idea again is that this is an isosceles right triangle. So if we have our right triangle for which it's isosceles, what that means, don't worry about my diagram here being perfect. If it's an isosceles triangle, the two non right angles have to be the same. So how do we know they're 45 degrees? Well, if you have an angle, uh, an angle, an angle plus 90 degrees, this adds up to be 180 degrees. Well, subtracting 90 from both sides, you get that 2x equals 90 degrees. Divide by 2, you see x equals 45 degrees. So it's, if it's an isosceles right triangle, the two non-right angles have to be 45 degrees. Okay, what about the other sides? Well, just for the sake of argument, let's say that one of the legs is one. Well, because it's an isosceles triangle, the two legs will have the same size. They're congruent to each other, so this side length has to be one as well. Well, what about the hypotenuse? We don't know what it is. Um, if you call the sides A, B, C as usual, let's call the hypotenuse C for a moment. We get one squared plus one squared equals C squared. So you're going to get one plus one equals C squared. That is C squared equals two. Taking the square, you see that C equals the square root of two. And so that then justifies the picture we have right here. Every isosceles right triangle will be proportional to this one right here, thus giving us these very simple trigonometric ratios. Well, let's remove these specific numbers for a moment. And let's suppose that the leg of this isosceles right triangle is arbitrary. Let's call it X for a moment. So we know it's, an, we know it's a 45, 45, 90 degree time triangle and we have that the one of the legs is x well because it's an isosceles triangle the other one has to be x so whatever this one is just copy it over here that's all we have to do and then to get the hypotenuse you're just going to take x times the square root of two that's all it takes to get there and then going another direction if we start off with the hypotenuse let's say the hypotenuse is x well then to get one of the legs you're just going to take x divided by the square root of two and then copy it for the other leg as well so we can compute the side lengths of a isosceles right triangle very quickly. So for example, imagine that a 10 foot rope connects the top of a tent pole to the ground. If the rope, well, okay, let's just draw that picture for, for a moment. Let's, let, it's safe to assume that the tent post is going perpendicular with the ground right here. And so then the rope is doing something like this. And so we know that the rope is 10 feet long. That's what we know. All right, so then continuing on with the story here, if the rope makes an angle of 45 degrees with the ground, again, we're assuming this is a right angle, that means that the other angle is going to be 45 degrees. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. That is an isosceles right triangle, um, as stated right here. How tall would the, the tent pole have to be for this situation? Well, if we take the hypotenuse, to get to the short side, you have to divide by the square root of 2. If you take the leg and want to go to the hypotenuse, you times it by the square root of 2. But to go from the hypotenuse to the leg, you divide by the square root of 2. So this side would have side length 10 divided by the square root of 2, which is approximately 7.0711 feet. And so we could say with confidence that the tent pole is approximately 7 feet long.